There is something very nostalgic about recording in my bathroom. This takes me back to like my first actual year on YouTube. So this is today's podcast episode. Hey, y'all. I don't even know what's on my glasses. K-pop as we know it is coming to an end. Isn't that wild? That's, it's absolutely crazy. The amount of things that we're reading about in the news, um, more groups that are becoming labels in and of themselves, groups leaving labels, um, transitions in names, members of groups that we thought would never have a problem, having major group altering issues, a reappearance of members of Big Bang. There's so much going on. And whether you realize it or not, this is a major shifting point in what we knew K-pop to be. Now, we already experienced it once before. The five-year streak from 2017 on back with BTS blowing up in the ways that they did and changing the trajectory of the industry. That was a big shift during that time. And then we had things shift relatively abruptly because of the pandemic. And although that was something that introduce some new things to some of us, such as online concerts and whatnot. South Korea wasn't new to that. SM had already been doing that at SM Town for quite some time. Um, even the old K-pop museum used to have virtual concerts and stuff like that. But right now, what we're seeing is the wild, wild west of K-pop. And it's, it's damn interesting. It's really interesting. So I just wanted to point out a couple things. Of course, since this is my podcast, this means that it is my opinion. So you may challenge it. You may have other observations and you might not care at all, but I want to talk about it anyway. The most exciting thing that I see happening is the fuller realization of artists as individuals. South Korean consumers still have a tendency and it's, it's jacked up, but South Korean consumers, some, still have a severe tendency of believing that they own these entertainers and whatnot. And a lot of these artists and performers have been pushing back on it like, nah, you don't. I was and still am and will continue to be after this part of my life is over, an individual with my own thoughts, my own mind, and you don't own me. Yet and still, it still has an impact on interactions and whatnot. I can't recall in recent years seeing anything of the newer generation of idol acts interacting in the same ways that we saw boy groups and girl groups used to in the first and second generation, predominantly second generation in my case. Um, and that's not to say they're not having fun. You see them on Ying Ji's uh, show and all of that, but it could be better. Also, <laughs> you are seeing... And I, I hate to say it, you're seeing the redundancy of musicality and production styles starting to have a deep divide between those who want to stay in the traditional trenches and those who continue to reinvent themselves. I made a recent appearance on another podcast that I absolutely enjoy listening to and just seeing how they approach things and looking at some of the comments in the comment section for the video that I was on, which of course none of them are personally directed to us. It's all opinions, so it doesn't hurt. But seeing the defensiveness that some take on uh, to defend the integrity of their favorite acts and whatnot, if you can observe the industry as a whole from a non-biased standpoint, there is a lot of redundancy going on. And for those who are challenging themselves and trying to do different things, they're opening themselves to a larger global audience. Whereas some, and there's nothing wrong with it, prefer to accommodate the sounds and desires and themes of where they are from. There's nothing wrong with that. But there is a divide and to continue to deny it does us no good. So no matter how much you may love one of your favorites, um, Sometimes they're just a uh, part of the system and that sucks. And the other big, big thing that I really realized makes all of what we knew K-pop to be in terms of this era coming to an end, uh, I learned and heard through some different things I read as well as some conversations I've been able to be a part of that idols are pretty much similar to freelancers. And that is concerning. I think that's a stretch. I told someone that they're like 1099. And if you are here in the United States, you may know what that mean uh, means. 
But I think the better way of classifying it would be like flight attendants. Now, maybe you are or maybe you aren't aware, but a flight attendant, the person who actually works within the flight, first and foremost, their job is not to serve us. Their job is to provide a sense of security and consistency, and they are not paid until the door is closed on the flight and wheels are up. That's insane. All of the, hey, how you doing? Let me help you find your seat. Did you need any help putting your luggage away? No, the bathroom is not open just yet. We haven't uh, actually gotten moving and all that. All of that is just flight fan service. And that's kind of what we have been experiencing our idols do. So seeing a shift in the past eight years of seeing more of them on YouTube and taking autonomy in that regard and whatnot, that allows them to compensate to an extent that gap where they're not paid, they are just expected to be available when they are available. These are what your schedules are. You really don't have too much that you can do to push against that. It's mildly exploitative, but tell me what job that you work for others is not. So I'm hoping that in 2025, we'll start to see a resurgence of more interactions from groups that we can actually see versus it having to be caught by behind the scenes cameras and whatnot and photography that we will experience a shift in the way that the labels approach management and wellness as a whole. We saw it over the years through JYP. We saw attempts of it with SM or we've seen some attempts of it with HYBE and all of its uh, subsidiaries. But it would be nice to see, and I don't think it'll happen, but it would be nice to see the artists unionize. Now, you may be absolutely against unions. I am not. I live in a union household. My husband is active in the union that he's in, and I'm active in the union that I'm in, albeit my union is a little bit different. It's a 501c4. It's the Freelancers Union. If you haven't heard of it, please check it out if you do any type of freelancing here in the United States. Um, but yeah, it'd be great to see them unionized, to actually have some sense of unity where they can pull together and continue to exact major change in their industry and in their nation. They are already utilized in so many ways for entertainment. They could all come together to utilize that strength for common change. I want to see more production styles. The videos are crazy. The areas in which they're traveling to film stuff and whatnot now. It's, it's an interesting time with that, but I do want to see more styles. I think we're getting a good saturation of it, but I do feel like 2023 sounds like 2024 and some aspects in 2024 sounds like 2022. But those are just my opinions. Those are just my opinions. I don't think I want to do one of the big end of the year reflections like I used to do in the past. I'm not certain. I mean, today is just uh, December 6th. So, yeah. We'll see what happens. All right. Bye, y'all.